So previously when we've done this, we've told quite amusing stories, but may, maybe this time we could tell a more serious yarn. Yeah. And I was thinking, for that. you know, something that people might connect to emotionally uh, could be the story about when you ripped me out of um, the school that I was at in London and forced me to go away to a boarding school. Age you seven. Ripped you out. You ripped me out. I did not I was rip you out. Weeping. I was like, I mm. just want to stay with my friends. Mm. Little seven year old me, and you, you ripped me away and you, you went spent your entire time arsing around. And the headmaster, I mean, virtually, we were on the verge of you getting chucked out. And I thought, before he gets chucked out, I'm going to take him out and get him into a boarding school because he's not, it's not the right place. Well, Do you remember that? Yes, it was a lovely place. I was very happy. All, all my memories of it were just just of joy and contentment and playing with my friends and just a very happy time of my life. All right, okay. And then it wasn't just your, the hand landed on my shoulder. You're coming with me. It wasn't just playing with your friends that you were doing either. What does that mean? Another story. What do you mean playing? I don't. Uh, let's not go there. I was seven, um, if you're insinuating yeah. that I was... <laughs> Wasn't that earlier starter? You weren't seven. You were ten. I, you get, I you're remember getting all the ages wrong here. You were a ten-year-old okay. young man <laughs> in a very good school, right. but it was a day school, and you were allowed to go a bit free and easy with everything. Okay, ten-year-old young man. Yeah. So I said, I'm going to get you into a really good boarding prep school. I won't mention the name because I'm sure they don't want your name attached to them. So, I went down and saw the housemaster, who I, was a friend of mine, and he said, you'll have to go and see the headmaster. So I said, absolutely fine. And he said, I'll put in a good word because, you know, I'm very fond of you, Michael, and I'm sure Jack would be very good at this school. So we made an appointment. We went down to the headmaster's sort of house, it was, and if you remember, when we were in the car, right? That was when I had that nice, I um, can't remember what the car was now, the Mercedes, you know? Um, it wasn't new, because I couldn't afford a new Mercedes because I was spending all my money on school fees. Well, not at that point. You had probably very manageable school fees until you decided that you wanted to send me to an expensive boarding school. So don't put the car at my door. Right. Um, on the drive down there, you were all fine and chatty and your normal self, normal, yeah. slightly going over the top, talking well, a lot, sort of leaping around. But, but a you polite, were fine. conversational, yes, young, you yeah, yeah, ten-year-old yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The minute we got near where this school was, completely changed. I mean, completely changed. I mean, you, you changed into... Your body language was like, did you ever see a film called The Elephant Man? I mean, you were like that. You were all kind of, you got your whole body into some weird kind of shape in the back of the car. It's like the Quatermass films. Did you ever see any of those? The These are all quite old references. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so you got your whole body into a kind of knot like this. You look like Gollum. And, and it was so weird because your whole face sort of changed and you were sitting in the back, and you were sitting in the back of a car and sort of swinging. <laughs> I mean, literally doing that as though you should be in an asylum. And then of course we arrived there and, and, and the, one of the teachers who we, I knew sort of was there and opened the door and said, oh, hello, Michael, how are you? And, there's Jack in the back, <laughs> and you're doing all this stuff and coming out and sort of say, say hello, it's Mr. Devitt, and you say, <laughs> oh, it was a nightmare. I mean, talk about a bad arrival. Unbelievable. So we arrived at this beautiful school in the country. Well, it wasn't in the country, but, it, you know, with lovely playing fields and everything. Yep. Went in to the headmaster's house we sat in the little waiting room. There was a sweet lady who came over and introduced herself to you as the headmaster's secretary. And then we went in to see the headmaster and he came across, said, hello, Mr. White, all nice to meet you. And, we, and this must be Jack. And he put his hand out to shake and you went, what is this all about? 
you pulled your hand away from him and said he was trying to strangle you. He, just he went, probably was. No, he was. He probably was. He was a very sweet, charming man, the headmaster. No, I thought he had a... Anyway, so we got... That was the introduction. So, in other words, it was not going well. Yeah. Well, right? We then sit down, and he then starts asking you questions. Mm. So, lovely to see you and to meet you, Jack. Um, so, what have you been up to today? And then suddenly we were in all this... And, I mean, it was just unbelievable. You put on a complete act yes. for him and started talking drivel to him. Yes. Absolute rubbish. And he was saying to you, you know, do you, do you enjoy sport, Jack? And he said, no, not really, no. And you were putting all these faces on and everything. I thought, what is he doing? You, you are deliberately trying to stitch me up. And there we are. What? There we are. Finally, what? cotton's on. What? That's exactly what I was trying to do. Yes. I was deliberately trying to flunk the interview because I didn't want to be sent there. Yeah, it was but you a didn't very, have to... very clever ploy on my behalf to make sure that I didn't get into this school with this horrible headmaster that was trying to strangle me and I was able to go back and enjoy my life in London as a young 10 year old man with my friends. Well, as you well know, that's not what happened in the end, because of course he, we finished that, and, and then he said to me, well, Michael, it was so nice to see you again, and uh, very nice to meet Jack. By then you'd run off and scuttle back into the car, I think, mm. you were sort of hanging around the car. No, I think at that point I was licking the windows in his office, just to make sure that he 100% wouldn't let me into the school. Right. I think I was pointing at planes and then doing a bit of window licking. Right. I wet my pants and then, and then right. headed for the car. Right. And then there was a, before the end of this meeting, he said that he wanted you to go and do a little bit of an examination of something, mm. you know, just a little, t very easy little test. Yeah. And Mr. Gordon was going to give you a little, f you know, a bit of French, a bit of maths, a yeah. bit of English, a little, very simple, easy little test. So he comes in, Mr. Gordon, and he says, Ah, oh, then, Jack, comment allez-vous? And you said, What? I thought, No, you've done that deliberately. You know exactly what comment allez-vous was. I mean, it's the simplest, the one that everybody knows, the phrase that every living soul who learns French knows first. Comment allez-vous. Where and is you the say, swimming pool? What? Anyway, went off, came back. Mr. Gordon looked, didn't look at all pleased as he handed a note to the headmaster and said, this is the score, Jack Whitehall's test score. Educationally substandard. I mean, technically, on the basis of that small examination, I, I would have been, like, medically slow. I mean, they would have, I would have been maybe allowed into an institution of some sort but not to an exclusive boarding school. There was a huge Plan waiting list at this school. Perfectly If you remember. Executed. Huge waiting list. Mm. And I had an unofficial confirmation that you'd be bumped up to the top of the waiting list and yeah. straight in. Okay. But when they met me, you, they, I mean, no. that was it. You were right down the yeah. pan because the headmaster ran me the following day and said, look, I'm really sorry, Michael, but I'm afraid I've got very bad news, and that is that I'm afraid Jack is probably not what we're looking for here. No. Yeah. He's mentally... No, he <laughs> didn't say that. He just said... He, 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 I tell you, I remember the word he used. Struggle, he said. Struggle. I think Jack would struggle here. And I thought, yes, he would, wouldn't he? Mm. Struggle, he said. And that so is where the no. story should have ended. Yeah. Is that my plan was pulled off perfectly. I pretended that I, I maybe had some issues and therefore I should not have been admitted into that school and mm -hmm. I should have been able to go back to my friends. Mm -hmm. But then what happens is that you swoop in, as you always do, and ruin things by sucking up to the headmaster by calling up some of your actor friends and getting them to suck up to the headmaster, offering him three 
theatre tickets to go and see your clients in plays. You That's basically, not true. No. You Edward bribed... Fox rang him and said, I'm playing the Theatre Royal in Bath and you can have four tickets. I'm yep. getting the Winslow boy and I'd love you, Headmaster, to have four tickets because I'm a huge admirer of Michael Whitehall and his son. Right. And the Headmaster Bribery. said, thank you so much, Bribery. Edward. And incidentally, I loved you in Edward VIII and Mrs. Simpson. So this is like the college admission scandal in the US, but just instead of money, it's theatre tickets and favours from actors and lunches and dinners and premieres. Well, you and were. I was bribed into a school that I didn't want to go to. I then made a bet with you, if you remember. Yes, I do remember. It wasn't a bet. It was. It wasn't a bet. It was, a, it was said, an agreement. It was a deal. Yeah, okay, it was a deal. I said, if at half term yeah. you want to leave, I will let you leave. Do you remember that? I do remember that. And that was because the only then reason. you were doing all that. <laughs> and all that rubbish. Uh, and I said, okay, Jack. I'll, you can leave at half term. If I didn't like it. If you didn't like it. So, you went there and I, in, the, and some, I, in the autumn term, in September. And because I'm a very outgoing and open-minded person, I did yeah. end up enjoying it more than I thought. Yeah, and I had you you loved it, a right? good first term. Yeah. And I, and I admit that what helped me get through that was knowing that had I come to your half term and said, I didn't want to go back mm -hmm. to my friends, you would have allowed me to. Yeah, and that is the case. Yeah. You would have definitely that helped you a lot, and you would have allowed me to return to my friends had I said I, I what that if I had come to your half time and said actually I would like to go back to my old school, you would have let me. No, of course I wouldn't. Ridiculous. What was take you away from? So the school? agreement was actually made under false pretenses, no, and I was tricked. I just no, it was, I was tricked. tricked again. It was just to encourage you, so that you could you could take one step at a time. So you're unhappy at the very beginning, but then you're thinking, oh, I can leave at half term. And then the weeks go by and it's half term and you're thinking to yourself, actually, I quite like it here. I think I'll give it another half a term. What? Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, please do subscribe if you want to see some more videos like that um, and leave us any comments below. Um, or if you prefer to troll Michael Whitehall directly, you can do that at Father Whitehall. Just go onto Twitter and you can just get a direct line and just troll him on there.